Amen. We never surrender. We never give in. We never quit. We never give up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Doing all to stand, we stand therefore. We don't never give up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you're the last man on earth, swing the sword till you fall. Swing till you fall. Keep swinging till you fall. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is our, that's how we're programmed as Christians. Amen. Give these young men one more hand. Thank you, sons. Appreciate you. Hallelujah. Amen. Make sure y'all got the downstairs air cut on too. And these over here and downstairs. Cut it all on. Let it be as cool as we can make it. Amen. All right. Turn to Numbers chapter 22. I want to show you the determination of the enemy to curse you. Amen. Say curse. curse. Now, I've, I've explained the curse before, but I'll just, I'm, I'll, give a, I'll give a basic uh, definition of a curse. Well, I, I'll give you two. The first one, I'll, I'll give you this spiritual, I'll give you a, more of a spiritual understanding. A curse is the enemy tempting you to transgress break the law, that's where the curse comes from. Amen. When you break the law, the enemy says there's a, there's, a law, there's a law broken. His job is to operate on sin. Amen. He works on sin. You got what I'm saying? Amen. So when he tempts you to break, he, the temptation is not a curse. Temptation is not sin. But once you transgress or you go ahead and, and indulge in that sin, then you create a transgression. A transgression is a deviation from the standard or from the law. Amen. You got what I'm saying? Amen. That means you broke God's law. So Satan knows his domain is sin. Whatever, whenever you in sin, whatever you use in sin, whatever part of your body you use in sin, he can capitalize. He can begin to attack that and even possess that if you continue in sin in that area. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So once he, once he gets that, once you, break, once you create, once you transgress, then Satan releases, it's a long definition, but Satan, there's a curse, which is a transgression of the law. Then he releases spirits to begin to bring about the judgment. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. So, don't, so at, once a person continues to transgress, a curse is there. A curse is a payment. It's a debt. Amen. You owe. You're going to have to pay this. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to release spirits to follow you till that debt is paid. So, that, so all of a sudden, a person starts getting attacked and getting uh, uh, going through all kinds of problems. Don't know what's going on. Well, these are demons have been released against your life because of the curse, because of you transgressing God's law. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Another scripture says that a, a, a definition of a curse is something that pursues you, overtakes you, Amen. pursues you till it catches you and destroys you. You hear what I'm saying? So this is, this, is, this is what Satan is trying to do. Now, he knows he cannot curse you unless you invite the curse. You must invite a curse. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must open the door for him to enter your life. And once you do that, he knows at that point he can come. He has legal right. Satan is a lawyer. He's a legalist. He knows the Bible better than you. What do you think he's doing when the Bible says the, the, son, when the sons of God came before in Job, they came before God, and here comes Satan coming too? And what was he thinking he was doing? He was going over to accuse men. With, how, what was he accusing with? The law. He was saying they broke your law. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's a lawyer. So what he does is he, stay, he waits for you to transgress, then he capitalizes with cursing you, and he sends demons into your life to destroy you until you have nothing or until you're totally gone. You got what I'm saying? Now, that's, and so when a person is under a curse, uh, another translation, I think, in another definition in Habakkuk, it says it's like a man putting, putting money in pockets with holes. It's part of a curse. You, have, you know, I can't get nowhere. Two steps forward, three steps back. It's like something, an unseen force is working against them constantly. They don't know what, why is it that I can't move? I can't go forward when well, something good happened. Matter of fact, you've been cursed so long that you prepare for the bad. If something too good come, you say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. What's coming? Because I just, you know, you ain't, you ain't used to having no, no, uh, um, um, no longevity of success. You know. People get a new car and worry about, oh, I mean, I mean, worry about wrecking. 
That's why they think. Did you know when you, when you live with that mentality, you literally sabotage your own self? Because you, you allow what might happen to rob you of trying. Now you understand what I'm saying. So, so curses are the result. Say curses, curses. are the result, are the result of, sin. of sin. Now when God's talking about uh, uh, thou shalt not kill, steal, uh, covet, uh, commit adultery, flee fornication, these commands that he gives us. When, 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 we, when we transgress or we fail to keep uh, those commands, then we open ourselves for the curse. You got what I'm saying? Now, for every sin, there's a penalty. Satan can only bring the penalty for that sin. Remember I was telling y'all that there was a lot, in, back in the days of the law, when a person stole, when he got caught, they cut his hand off. That was the, that was, that was the penalty for stealing. You got what I'm saying? Now we know now Satan's not going to physically cut a person's hand off. But what he'll do is he'll bring that punishment, and it may not be your physical hand, but your hand won't be blessed. Your hand won't. The Bible says he gives you your hands to, he, he, he gives you the power to get wealth. All of a sudden, the Bible says he bless, God will bless the work of your hands. Amen. But once that curse come on your hands, because of stealing or something that you transgress, then Satan will make it his business to make sure that nothing grows with you, that you touch. Amen. And everything you touch becomes destroyed. Yeah. It's a curse called cursed hands. Amen. It's a curse of cursed feet. Wherever a person goes, they, 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 uh, accidents. Amen. Always a curse of accidents. Amen. You ever seen people just getting car wrecks, just always getting hurt, falling down, accident prone. We call them accident prone. But there's a spirit trying to destroy them. Yeah. There's a curse. There's, some, there's, a, see, there's a transgression that has not been paid for and has not been repented of is a better word. And so Satan's going to capitalize on that. Now, I know you wish that it was just, I just get Jesus and everything's all right. That's why we're getting destroyed. Because we were told that and we didn't know why you got Jesus. There's an enemy over here saying, okay, well, 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 as long as you don't know I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm going to destroy you. He's up. He, while you sleep, Satan's up calculating what he's going to do to you next. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And because we are so into a uh, 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 talk show type church yeah. where we get self-helps and without any inspiration of prayer or fasting or sacrifice, we never have power to deal with the curses or with the, with the, with the tricks of the enemy in the first place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, nobody can do all your praying for you. You got to pray for you. Pray for your own home. Pray for your own kids. Pray for your own marriage. Nobody going to pray for me like me. Because I can ask you to pray for me, but I ain't told you what I really want you to pray about. But while you praying some generic prayer, I'm over in my own heart saying, Lord, you know exactly what I'm dealing with. I'm talk I can talk better for me than you can pray for me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So because we put all of our Christian development on others and on church, when we don't even understand that that's not the function of the church, the church is a place that you come to get edified to do the work. You do do the work yourself. That's why the Bible says, physician, heal thyself. Lay hands on your own house. Are y'all there or not there? Now, say Satan is committed to curse me. He is committed to curse you. Y'all got what I'm saying? Now, go over to Numbers 22. This is a common story that I've heard preached backwards and forwards, but I always ring out something that I, I like. I see something else. Because, I mean, a lot of people focus on the fact of Balaam being a bad guy, a false prophet that was actually was talked into cursing, trying to curse children of Israel. What I look at this story is that he actually figured a way to do it. The end result was it worked. They did become cursed. The determination of the enemy is greater than what you think. Amen. It'll make you pray if you knew how much he was after you. Yeah. Look at this, verse 1. Y'all there? Yeah. Numbers 22 and 1. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on the side of Jordan by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And then listen, 
Balak, of course, was the king, and he's watching the children of Israel, and he saw what they done destroyed these Amorites, right? Now, so that means you got people watching you. See, there's people studying you that hears about what's going on in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, part of a person wanting you cursed is it usually uh, comes out of the heart of jealousy. Two things, fear and jealousy. People either scared of you or they're jealous of you. So why you, why, why many times we are cursed by people who really are around us or close to us. Because a person close to you can issue, can actually do more damage to you than a person that don't know you. That's why people that say stuff to me about me don't know me, man. It's like, please, you don't know me. It don't matter what you say. But I've learned as you grow up that even folks close to you, it don't matter what they say neither. Because Negroes going to be Negroes. They're going to say what they're going to say, especially when you start walking outside of the normal. When you get outside of the box, start walking outside of the normal, they're going to say what they're going to say. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have to understand that you are the greatest, you are the greatest shield against Satan attacking your mind. You are, you, you got to put a shield up around your mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because Satan works on thoughts. It's all about a thought. Nobody ever smoked crack without thinking. Nobody commits a dutch without thinking. It starts as a thought. It's a seed planted. The seed is planted first. Now, the seed is, the only reason Satan is planting the seed is because he had, he, 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 he saw you looking. The Bible says when, but when Satan planted that seed in Eve to eat of the tree, Eve had already said that the tree was beautiful and looked good and, 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 and it looked like it would make one wise. He called her looking. She was looking at the tree. That's why he said something to about the tree. See, when you meddling, he'll catch you meddling. See, when a man got his head down, he's going to and fro from work to home. He ain't looking. But once he gets to looking around, then Satan say, oh, I see you looking. So let me give you something to look at that'll capture your attention. Let me give you something. To, now, listen, I wasn't going here. So, yeah, this. Let me give you something that's going to capture your attention since I caught you looking. That's the reason why I've learned it. Drive with horse blinders. Horse blinders is tunnel vision. I'm driving straight ahead, especially now, because they, they popping out so much. I mean, a man is totally assaulted. You assaulted as a man now. It's, it's getting ridiculous. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They come in a day where they just going to be down, walking down the street naked. You just going to have to, you going to have to, you sisters don't say nothing to these women be doing that, but your man is the one they doing it for. Remember that. Why you like, she just doing her thing, yeah, in front of your man. Well, he ought to be, well, he ain't that strong. Why you giving these brothers all this credit? If you home sneaking, watching 50 Shades of Grey, as if pornography is a, is a man thing. Y'all know y'all computers is, 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 is dirty. No, y'all computers is dirty because women are curious like Eve looking at the, I wonder, oh, I wonder what it, I wonder what it, whoa, well, let me see what it. You get caught up just curious. <laughs> and then Google's already setting you up because they're going to put, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to shoot something at you while you ain't even paying attention. You on her looking up, I wonder what the Hebrew is real life. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's a box over here. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. See, you're in trouble. And then, 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 then y'all getting called. Oh, see, I wasn't even there. See, y'all on Facebook. See, Facebook is what's getting y'all. Because y'all current on conversation. You always know when people are, are stalking each other, trolling on Facebook. They start liking everything. Little comments. Oh, that's cute. You, that's a cute picture. Comments. Facebook ain't nothing but it's set up to cause you to, 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 to it's set up for foreign case. What about adultery is what it's set up for. And so you have to be careful when Satan catches you looking. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Keep your eyes. The Bible says, let a man drink from his fountain alone. Keep your eyes on your own. And sometimes our fountains can get a little old. You know, the paint can chip on the fountain and it can be a little old and it could be an outdated fountain. You remember them old water fountains at the park? You had to step on the foot thing. You, did, you, was kinda, you didn't know to drink out of it or not because you're like, man, it could be dirty. It ain't no time what could come out of this fountain. Well, you have to learn to clean up and upgrade your fountain. A fountain looks real good with a better dress. <laughs> you're talking about you want, you want your fountain, you want your woman to look better, but you ain't never bought her nothing to make her look better. In your mind, you over here looking at the girls with this, with this hot mama stuff on, but your wife is walking around like a mummy, and you, you don't know why. Her dress so old. <laughs> I mean, her dress is old, like a slave, old, real old. Ain't no sexiness in that. But yet, but yet you want, but but yet you talking about. I'm tired. Of, yeah, but look at what you're doing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Got to give us something to work work with herself. Sometimes the body just goes, but you can work on the face. <laughs> You know, sometimes you know you can. Sometimes you can't help the body, but boy, you can show get the face together. You see big girls with a pretty face. They say, you know what? I got one thing working for me, and I'm gonna work on this face. They got I, I, they eyes are right. Everything is perfect. But 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 take care of your fountain, men, and you and you always want to drink from that fountain and not be running around looking for somebody else's out here, out here thirsty. Oh, Lord, how am I even getting on this stuff? I wasn't even, I wasn't on this stuff. So there are people that are, that watch your life. One of the greatest revelations you will learn is that you have no idea how people are watching you. If you won't know if they're watching you, do something wrong. The minute you do, your family ignore like you say. They play like, damn, damn, Christian. That's what they say. You, soon as they see you somewhere you ain't supposed to be, do, or you do, I thought, I, th I thought you, don't you go to church? I thought you was, see, I thought, see, I, you said, I thought you was a Christian. You said. They ain't never had no interest in you being saved until you do something wrong. So if you want to know if people watching you do something wrong, they'll, they'll tell you. I was really looking up to you. When are you going to tell me? You, uh, give me some encouragement. Your encouragement might have made me do right. Now people gonna come after the fact and tell you to make you feel worse. Well, I was sure looking up to you. When you gonna tell me you was looking? That's called encouragement. Tell me you're watching me now. But when you mess up, but but now that you're down, so I. <laughs> well, people do stuff like that. Okay, let me get on. Okay, now, so Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to them, right? And Moab was so afraid of the people because they were many, and Moab was distressed. Because the Balak's king of Moab, but because uh, and Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. Now, 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 listen to what I'm saying. Yo, you being blessed creates stress for others. I'm gonna prove this. I'm gonna prove what I'm gonna tell y'all. We just bought another German Shepherd puppy. We got a, we got another dog, Brownie's a Chesapeake Retriever. Now, Brownie's a little older. She's big dog now. But this little puppy, I ain't even named her. I ain't even named the dog yet, little, 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 little boy dog. Because I've always wanted a shepherd. I brought the dog, the little dog, we brought the dog home. And the kids, is, you know, taking care of the dog, watching the dog, doing what you do to a little new dog. Brownie's, my older dog, she's over at slobbing. My wife looked up, why is she, she never did this? Why is she doing this? She looked up and realized, she, my wife looked it up and said on the internet, that, that, that dogs, when you get a new dog, it creates stress for the other dog. Wow. So this, so, so Brownie's under pressure. Because this little dog is receiving all these blessings and attention, and it causes stress. Oh, 
See, now you got to understand, especially with us, you, you being blessed because somebody is stressed out over your relationship. Every time they see you, they stressed out. Somebody is slobbing. I mean, the dog was literally. <laughs> I said, what's wrong? I ain't never seen a dog do it before. This thing that's live. That dog was so under pressure. Because this little dog was receiving so much love and attention. Your blessings stress people out. You been with your wife? That stress people out. You Negroes are so silly. That's women stressed out over your wife. When they see you, they stressed. When they see you with your husband, they stressed. You sitting there wanting to be like them because you think they free and single. They are stressed. That's why they shopping because they stressed. They trying to get rid of the stress. You being blessed, stress folk out. The job you got. The way you carry yourself. Your giftedness. Your ability, your talents. People get under pressure. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I've learned that now. The reason why I'm telling you that is because if you don't know that, you will be embracing folks that's plotting to kill you. You got to understand being blessed, you have to have discernment when you're blessed. Because you got to know who is around me for the right reason. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, many, many times in the life, especially as a pastor, you get many people that, that, that come and they stressed because they don't want to follow you. They want to be you. They're looking to replace you. Who is in your life looking to replace you? You have people on a job like that. They be right, these people right up under you, getting your wisdom and knowledge, figuring out how to sabotage you to replace you. Now, 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 now I don't want to make you suspicious of folk. But if you're going to hold what God has given you, you better know somebody is determined to curse you. The very thing you ready to throw away thinking is nothing, somebody's over slobbing about. You think it's nothing, somebody over here just hoping you never wake up. Growing up in the hood, I've seen this a lot in the projects. I would see it all the time. It'd be two women, both of them are single with kids, live by themselves. She got a man. The girl ain't got no man over here talking to her about her man. Girl, if I was you, I'm going to let that nigga do me like that. The minute she put the man out, the man go right over this girl's house who's over here talking to her ear. Then while you over here thinking this girl's your friend, took your hand, stole your man, done so sweet, had to be a plan. <laughs> Couldn't trust her with she, let alone your kids. <laughs> Friends, how many of us have them? <laughs> That's why I don't listen. Don't listen to nobody talking about your spouse. Are you crazy? Don't listen to nobody talking to you about your friend. They doing it because they jealous. They stressed over your relationship. It's too good. You have close people in your life. Here comes somebody coming always talking about that person and you and this person is covenant. They stressed. They see something. They stressed over it. They's like, man, this is beautiful. I can't get it. So I'm going to tear it up. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? People do that a lot. Divide you from people that God wants in your life. That's why, listen. Lord, I ain't, I'm trying to get on this message here. The people that God, listen. The, pe the relationships that God brings in your life will be the ones under the most attack. The relationships Satan brings will be smooth sailing. Won't be never no stress. Y'all always agree. But the ones that God bring, it always be a, a it be a, that's why pastors are usually fall out with you 15, 16 different times. He don't even know he fall out with you. You be mad at a pastor sitting there mad and he don't even know what's wrong with you. You sitting there thinking he talked to you. <laughs> Cause the word he preached, it cut you and you think he told him, he, he know he know what he said to me. Man, I ain't thinking about you. But why would Satan always do that? Because he knows, let me separate you from where you're getting fed at. That's, that's, that's the reason why he do that. That's why you have to fight to have a relationship with a real, a real pastor. You better fight for that relationship. See, where I'm getting fed, ain't nobody going to stop me from eating. I don't care what you say. You can tell me, man, that restaurant got a D. 
the gray was a D. Because I told you, I done been to some hole-in-the-wall restaurants that you have to get your meal with your eyes closed, but the food was too good. Sometimes the food is just too good. <laughs> and some of y'all know that. You, I done been in restaurants. I'm going to keep it right. I've been in restaurants before. Be looking at the floor. Be like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. But this sweet potato pie. It might be a roach over there, but, man, this sweet potato pie. Sweet potato pie, man. Sweet potato pie is good. <laughs> you do it at the Waffle House all the time. Be roaches crawling in the Waffle House. Be everywhere. But you'll still go in there and get them hats, man. I, I want some ham in it and some, and some cheese and some onions and the ham. And I want that in there with a, with a, with a, with a patty melt. And they come over. I look like they've been fighting in the trailer park. Coming out there <laughs> like they've been rassing in the back. And they <laughs> greasy her, touching your food. And you, you'll still eat it. Because it is what it is. So, 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 so don't be letting people talk you out of getting fed. You know, because many times to get fed, it requires a, a, um, an obstacle. You got to overcome an obstacle to get fed. Anytime you eat somewhere and there was no sacrifice in it, it's, you, you can get that anywhere. That's like McDonald's. You get that anywhere. But when you go somewhere where it was like a slow cook, slow-cooked meal, Sac somebody sacrificed. And so to get that, they're going to make you sacrifice because they ain't going to just give it out because it costs too much. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So a lot of times when God sends you somewhere to get fed, it'll be, it'll, it'll be a challenge. The church might not be in your city. I'm just telling you. It might, not, it, it, it might not cater to the area that you think you need to be ministered in. <laughs> you know, people say, well, I, I wanted to have a youth ministry or I, I'm going there because they got a women ministry. They might not have none of that. It might just be a challenge. You're going to be challenged because this is where you need to be. And if it wasn't for God, I ain't talking about here. I'm talking about wherever God wants you to be. But wherever that place is, it's going to be a challenge. And those that make a sacrifice... See, that's, this, 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 this is the whole story of Ruth. The whole story of Ruth was a person that made a sacrifice, that willing to say, I'm going to make a sacrifice. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. It don't cost, if, see, if, if it don't cost you nothing, it ain't going to really cost God nothing. Yeah. Can I go on? Yeah. All right, please, Lord, that's two scriptures. And I, I've already been 30, 40 minutes. <laughs> Y'all there? Look at this. Look at, look at verse, uh, look at verse four. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, now, Shall this company lick up all that are round about us? Man, I can stop on that too. Amen. Now look at what he's saying. Don't, don't put me up there, bro. Now look at what he's saying. He said, now, now, now what, why was these people, what, where did the hate come from? Because they was worried about what we going to lose. Amen. See, you must understand, part of the reason why people will curse you it's because they worried about what, what they're going to lose by you getting free. Now, you may not believe me, but you know, that's why when you start talking God to your weed partner. Wow. All right, man. I want her at. We smoke weed together. If you do that, what well, I'm going to lose? You know, you start talking God to somebody who want to be in adultery. I, that ain't, what's, this means nothing for me. So my job is to talk you out of this. Oh, why am I, see, I don't even know why I'm saying this today. Who, see, see, who's in your life that's that in your life that, that's talking you out of what God wants for you? And the bad thing about it, you know it. You know it. Samson knew Delilah was trying to kill him. Amen. Every time he, he tricked and told her where his strength was, she did exactly the thing to try to test his strength. He knew she was an assassin. But yet he belayed with her anyway. Who is it in your life that you need that bad? 
that you're willing to lay your hand in their lap even though you know they bad for you. This is kryptonite. This is poison. Every time you go there, you feel you lost. Who, who am I talking to? Every time you go, you lose a little bit more of you. The last time you went there, your mind, your mind started to convert to their philosophy. And you battled their philosophy for a while justifying how you can do this. And it was the grace of God that shot a word in your head to say, wait a minute, this is still wrong. Because usually when Satan curses you and you falling into the trap, you don't know. You become deceived. And you start justifying how this is right for me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what happens when you playing around with pornography. Because if you study this out, sexual sin was the end result of this curse. When you click a little bit and say, well, I can just, just want to see it. I can handle it. The progression of the lie. Is that I can handle it. This is the folly of a drug addict. I saw what it did to them, but I. It's the folly of drug dealers. I saw him lose his life, but I. For some reason, we seem to be invincible. Like we are above getting caught. Until you find yourself in the trap and the first thing you say is how did I get here if you be honest you the Lord will rewind remember I caught remember you was looking it started with you meddling are you hearing what come on y'all there can, can, can we can we can y'all handle what I'm trying to tell you listen it said Lord I'm, I'm trying to preach something but I'm preaching something I'm going I'm trying to preach this but I'm this is it's coming out like this. Amen. That's the type of preaching you want. That's why I tell you why people don't really get help because they not there's no there's no there's no there's no there's no Holy Spirit led preaching. It's all you know. It's about to shout and to make you dance. Many times I don't want you to shout. I'll be like leave out of her crying. Leave out her leave out her leaking. That's better <laughs> because that's gonna mean more to you than just we gonna huck a buck for two hours and you gonna leave out her and forget all you gonna dance out what I said. But you got your blessing. Look at this. Now, now, and, and Moab said unto those men, and now shall this company lick up all the round about us. As the ox licketh up the grass of the field, and Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent message therefore unto Balaam, the son of, of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, come out from Egypt. Ain't that something? The enemy knows, man. The enemy knows you. He know where you came from. Amen. See, while you sleep, the devil said, listen, come here, come here, come here. There's a brother that got, he, it's a, this guy just got off drugs. He came out of this. How can we get him back? What can we do? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How can we keep reminding her of the abuse? Oh, she needs a dream. How can we keep her feeling rejected so she won't let nobody in. So, oh, remind her of what happened. Remind her of the abuse. Keep reminding her of the abuse. Now let's send the cure. Let's send the solution. Oh, it's another woman. Let's remind her of the abuse until that abuse is so strong that she can't trust a man at all. Now let's send what? The cure. It's another woman. All of a sudden, something that you would never listen to. You would never go that way. But because the enemy has sat there and said, I know what she came out of. I saw her come out of Egypt. All she needs is a little more tweaking. And we can get her to receive. We, 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 we can make her receive this as a, as, a, as a solution. And we'll steal her soul. 
because she would think this is an answer. That's why when you talk to people, lesbians, let me, tell you, let me be clear about what I'm talking about. They'll justify that. Well, she, she, she takes good care of me, and she, you know, she loves me, you know. She just, you know, she, she takes care of me. She loves my kids, you know, just like a man. But she would have never went for that if Satan didn't study. And say, oh, what do we need to make her receive this? Oh, stepfather, brother, somebody molested. Okay, let's work on that. Work on that. Work on that. She's 15. Let some little boy come to her and then make then his little boy touch and then she she make her make her make, make her scared when she so she'll be scared of a man's touch. Remind her of the pain. Remind her of the rejection. Let's 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 bring people in her life like Suge Avery. That went over that that went over y'all head. Y'all sat there and watched that movie and never even know what y'all was really watching. That girl was abused by her daddy, raped by her daddy, beat by this man, and the answer was a woman. Now that was total demonic conditioning for this right here. And y'all went right on through that, watching the movie, still mad at the man, ain't figured out what is this happening? Who's putting this in front of my face to give me this answer? That's why some of y'all went into that. Shook like honey. I just like a bee. <laughs> that movie made me so mad. Because I saw what I said. I said they done took and everything the white man done done to black women. They put it on us. And they feared us. And a black woman knows she ain't never been under no black man. We ain't never had no power really. Not really. And that, that movie is, is what created this, really, the black feminism in y'all. That's what happened. Y'all want to deal with that. Y'all want to deal with it. That's what happened. What was the moral of the story at the end of the movie? What was the moral? Me and my sisters. End of the movie, end of the movie, Han huh, Shook living together. Sister show up. Me and my sister. Me and you, Y'all sitting there crying. <laughs> ain't no mountain, ain't no sea. <laughs> oh, missus, hey, get away, get away from here. <laughs> get. <laughs> I don't even know if the man had a name. He's just missed them. No, nigga, come on, man. I was just so, I was so outraged, like a Tyler Perry movie, outrageous. Mr. <laughs> Start hating, hating men after that. And then the solution. Woman, she understand me. That's how people get into this. That's how boys go get homosexuality. They get molested by a man. Get their wives crossed. So craving male affection. And they think male affection, they trade sex for affection. They won't do that to themselves, but it's just like they don't want this really the sex. They want the affection from a man. Amen. They want the male attention. Let's keep going. Is this too much? No. Let me show you something. Can I show you a little more? Amen. Look at this. Now, so he sent messages, son of Bithor. Okay, now. And he says, behold, those people come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth. They abide over against me. Now, come therefore, I pray thee. Curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Ain't that something? Are y'all hearing this? This is what Satan is saying about you. You don't even catch it. That's what he's saying about you. They really don't know how powerful they are. I'm scared of them. Or if they come into their purpose, they're going to do damage. I'm scared of them. How can I get them to destroy themselves so that I don't have to worry about who they are? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This is determination to curse you. This ain't no just happenstance. This is a calculation. I'm a, you, you, you got to curse these people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's how I feel like black people in America. That's why I feel. It's like, that's why I feel like. Like it was determination to keep us there. Terminate, they determined. 
If people are not determined, they would have left Black Wall Street alone. Why would, they, why would they mess with Black Wall Street? We had our own banks, hospitals, everything. Why did they mess with that? Because they determined. They gave us 40 acres and a mule. They was determined. They destroyed all our black leaders. Why? They was determined. Determined to curse you. Determined to keep you where you are. They, I, they ain't going to pull that stuff on me. Y'all, They pull it on y'all. You ain't going to pull it on me. You ain't going to make me look at myself and, and think I'm the lowest as if this is my position. I can research. I know what y'all did. And y'all ain't getting away with it. Don't you know that little boy, Tamir Rice? They charged him with inducing fear. That's, they, they charged him. That was a charge. Inducing fear. As justification for taking his life. When a BB gun is legal. But they said he induced fear. So that's why he lost his life. Because he made us scared is what they said. De determined to curse you. That's determination. That even your young men, younger young men, are looked at as combatants. Determined to curse you. We have to teach our sons things that nobody would understand what we have to teach our sons. Nobody knows what we have to talk to them about. And it's, it's, it breaks the heart of a father that grew up seeing a system and then realize you in a system and your sons are still in a system that you barely navigated out. You barely got through it. Barely. And they got to face this same system and the manipulation is heavier. They more slick than it was when we was coming up. That's why I say call me a nigga to my face. I'd rather you do that. But they don't do that no more. It's institutionalized. What was the problem? These people are mighty. We determined to curse them. Did y'all catch what I'm... We're going to curse them. We're going to figure out how to curse these people. Because we're scared of them. They don't even know we're scared of them. They don't even know we're scared of them. But we're scared of them. If they knew how much... You know what we're doing them like that? Because we're scared of them. If they get loose, man, tell them what they'll do to us. So we got to do something. Can we keep going? Amen. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me, this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure, I shall prevail that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. For I what that he whom thou blessest is blessed and whom thou curses. Curse that who you curse is cursed, who you bless is blessed. The elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand and came unto Balak. And spake unto him the words of, and spake un, came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. Now, now I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you got to see this. If you don't see this, this is why you're losing. Most of what people do, they'll wrap it up in godliness. Now, he's going to go to the Lord. To curse his own people. This is the reason why they need always to make like you've done something to break the law. They got to always use the law. They, they can't let it be they just done something to you out of the blue. It has to be you done something. Because they have to make their persecution godly. So this guy's going to go to the law. Go say I'm going to consult the Lord on how to curse his people. The same way they use Christianity all over the world to enslave folk coming in the name of the Lord that's the reason why we don't have uh, our own countries because they came in the name of the Lord you know what I'm saying and so many of our people want to throw the book away now because they think it was a, it, it, because they think it was their book it's not study it study it out y'all hear what I'm saying but many people in your life that's why the majority of people that do that, that, that will mess you up are the ones who will come say God told them something be, beware, beware. I'm talking about like call Angie's list on them. <laughs> call the Better Biz Bureau on them. Check them out. Come talking about God told me. That's one of the, to me, y'all don't even know, that's one of the greatest red flags to me. God told me. Wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. If God told you something about you, that's fine. 
But don't tell me God told you something about me. Because if you told me God told you something about me, then scripture tells me to investigate your prophecy, to judge it. So when I judge your prophecy, I ain't going to judge what you said. I'm going to judge your life to see if you this spiritual. Are you really on this level? See, that was somebody that wrote me. They were talking about, you know, we, we, you know, we ought to always, we ought to call out these false prophets and false preachers and false teachers. And I said, man, mighty funny. Everybody that feel like they need to call out false teachers and preachers, they ain't got no church. They don't have no foundation. Now, why would God go against, if God established the church, if God established Ecclesia, the church, why would he go get somebody outside the church to correct his own church? I said, bro, you need to get in. A, you, need to, you, need, you need to worry about. <laughs> then when I start going and I, and I really get down with him, yeah. dude, you into pornography. You're on the internet into pornography. Bro, you bound by lust. That's why you calling me because you want some deliverance. Yeah. But yet you're going to talk about the men of God as if you were, as if you were an expert. Wow. I said, bro, you're out of order. Amen. God did not get laymen to rebuke Amen. preachers. Amen. God got apostles Amen. and preachers to rebuke preachers. Oh, uh, y'all. That's all right. I, I know y'all want to hear that because God, I, I keep hearing this lately. God called me. God gave me this man. Man, God ain't told you to go attack his people. God love his people. What is wrong with us? He love his people. And the same, and if you would put some videos online and people could investigate your real life, you would see how terrible that is. But somebody out of the blue that don't even know you. They got some on some of my websites and disagree with it without even knowing the truth. He ain't calling these rogue people. Then when you say, okay, how you know that? Well, the Lord said, man, man, well, I got to believe your spirit. Then you start talking about qualifications to be a prophet. Then you find that they ain't got it. And many of y'all messed up over at God said. I'm telling y'all, no. Most people are messed up because some, I just had somebody write me talking about somebody told the Lord spoke to them about this woman. This woman says, this, this woman spoke to me and told me God told her this about me. The word brought confusion and made this woman back up off of what she's standing in getting victory. God ain't thought of confusion. And I said, I, and, I, and I really wanted to know, I said, I don't give people license to say anything to me. Amen. I let people know if you, if, if you bold enough to tell me God told you that, then you be bold enough for my, my, my exegesis. Because I'm coming back. I ain't going to just receive it. I'm going to come back. If, if it ain't right, I'm going to tell you. You missed it. Matter of fact, there was a brother online that said some sister had wrote him and said, the Lord showed me that you blocked me. The brother told, took the sister to the thing and said, look, I, look, I did not block you. See, here you are right here. She unfriended him. <laughs> but I thought God told you. See, see? Foolishness, man. And you out there in cyberspace with cats with no proven record. Y'all uh, heard what I said. You don't know why people really want to tell you God speaking to them. It is the greatest manipulation tool there ever is. There's no greater way to manipulate somebody other than to tell them God had told them something. People who really hear from God don't use God in that way. They know the responsibility of what they're going to say to somebody, and they don't use God like that. They understand, wait a minute, I know that I got to make sure what I'm saying is clear. And then because, because the principle of making sure I get the beam out of my eye is always before my face, I ain't got really no time to see you. I'm worried about what I'm doing. Oh. Did that come from that? Anything you can do, I can do stuff. No, some people are anointed to do that, some ain't. Everybody ain't got that. You be good just hearing witnesses for your own life. Turn right. Turn left. Don't go there. Get off the phone. Hang up. Don't gossip. Pull your panties up. Keep your pants on. Stay out of her house. That's the word of God too. 
We don't hear those words. That's somebody's husband that you believe in for. That's God. That's God. We don't hear those words. But we hear God tell you to tell me what I should be doing. This spirit, y'all got to come on, come on. We got to come down out of the spooky. We don't got too deep. We got to come down when it, all the spiritual language. This, I feel, it's a dead giveaway. Dead giveaway. I feel in my spirit. See, that's the way of manipulating folk. The Bible says, well, let your yes be yes, no be no. That means I'm saying this. I said it. I believe this. This is what I'm telling you. So if it's, so if it's wrong, blame it on me. But if I tell you I'm speaking for the Lord, then that, that, that brings confusion to you because you're saying, can I really, is this God? What, if I don't receive this, will I be in trouble with God? And now you in the, the tailspin. So a real mature person would just say, you know what? This is just what I'm saying. See, when you got integrity in your own word, then you don't have to use God because you, you, you believe your own word. See, when I, ain't gonna, when I don't keep my word, I need some backup to convince you because I don't really keep my own word. When I know my word is good, that's why people, people, that, people that know their word is good, they don't give their word often. I wanna, one of the hardest things, I try my best not to give my word because I know if I, I'm going to have to fulfill it. If I give it, it's hard when you give your word. And people will try to make you give it. That's why I tell people, if you catch me at the church and you talk, I may say, I ain't tell what I might say at church. Usually I'm, I'm, I'm half coming down off the anointing, man. I might say, I might, we commit to a lot of stuff at the church. Because that's when you, you're feeling good, the spirit's on you. The spirit lift off of you. you I forgot, I, what? My wife would tell me the next day, baby, you know, you, what? Did I say that? Did I really? They caught me when I was, when I was high. That's how they catch you when you high. Some of y'all, y'all know that y'all you know, real, y'all core members. I taught y'all that. That's why most of my core members don't come to me because they know. <laughs> like at the church, I, I like visitors. Everybody can come. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying a lot of things I'm going to tell you, and I'm just keeping it real. A lot of things I might say to you, you know, I might, you know, I'm, hey, how you doing? Love you. Hey, what's up? But I learned, wait a minute, remember what you're saying. Because if you tell somebody something, they're going to hold you to that. You know, and then you can't back out of that once you gave your word. But when you, when you have confidence in your word, then you don't have to use God to manipulate folk. All right, can we go on? Oh, uh, I ain't getting where I want to go. Let's go here. Look, the, okay, the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed. Okay, they said, okay, now Balaam, verse 9, and, and the God came unto Balaam and said, what men are thee? What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, which he knows these are God's enemies. Moab, Moab is God's enemies. He know that. Has sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which cover the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them. Peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. And the God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Did y'all catch that? But did, but did Balaam and Balak get what they wanted? Yes. They, they found a way to do it. Did y'all hear what I said? He said, you can't curse them, but, there's a, but, there, but he found a sure way where well, they could curse themselves. See, I, I told you, your enemy's job is to get you to transgress God's law. When you transgress and get into sin, he knows that's automatic curse. Are y'all there? So he strategizes your life with temptation. Most of your life is, a, is just temptation. Puts people in your life, puts devices in your life. It's, temp it's to tempt you to sin. That's why when you get saved, temptation is so much stronger. Before you were saved, man, some stuff didn't even bother you. You didn't even care about some things. I tell people all the time, lust wasn't a factor when you wasn't saved. I, I don't know why. It's like that wasn't even no big deal when, I when you wasn't saved. But the minute you get saved, it's like lust is a factor. Why? Because Satan starts working on that. He starts working in that area. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows your drive, and he knows he's going to work in that area. 
And all of a sudden, he's going he to, because, because the Bible says you burn. <laughs> the Bible says you, you, you're burning with passion. That's why it's better to marry than to burn. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So his job is, is to set you up with temptation. Temptation is, becomes your warfare. Say temptation is my warfare. Now you have to see temptation. And stop walking into temptation. Amen. You got to see what it is. Amen. See, if you first start walking with the Lord, you single. The Holy Spirit will say things like, if you're going to be around them, be around them with people. Don't be around that opposite sex by yourself. Amen. See, look, just, 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 just little things to keep you safe. No, nah, you don't need to, don't, don't fix him no dinner. Bible studies at the church. You know, they get that Bible study. We just go. <laughs> we just go have a little Bible study. We and him going to get some coffee. We're going to go out to, first going to go out to Vanilla Bread in a public area first. But the second date, come on over to the house. We, little Bible study on the couch, you know, little Bible study. All of a sudden, we ain't, ain't, no, we ain't studying the Bible. Now, let's look at a movie. Yeah. For you know, he knocked you off. He's gone. You on the altar. Oh, what happened? <laughs> Lord, if you don't deliver me one more time. <laughs> See? Where that come from? Because cause, cause you didn't heed the Holy Spirit tell you, don't be alone by yourself. Those are the words. That's why I see why people say they hear from God. That's what I heard. I heard all that stuff I listen to. I'm like, I'm hearing stuff to keep me saved. I've been saved over 20 years. I still believe, listen to when he tell me stuff. One of the main things God showed me, go, when, when you go somewhere, go somewhere with your wife. I don't travel by myself. I, it's, just a, it's, just a, it's just a principle. Now, if I have to, if it's some reason I have to go, she understands that. But usually I try not to. I make sure she's with me. Because women see things that I don't see. And it's not only seeing nothing, it's the presence. You need presence. That's why she sits right there. It ain't because she's cute. It's just because presence. Because when the witches come. And, you know, witches ain't ugly. Contrary to the water on the nose and the hat and the green face, witches ain't ugly. And they come in churches all the time. And the first thing, that's the first thing they look at is where, where the wife at. Let me see if she's a strong woman or a weak woman. Is she a silly woman or she won't be deep? Because I can get if she won't be deep. Or let me see if she's a woman don't play about her family or husband. How far away does she walk when he's by himself? Let me see. That's what they do. So my wife be watching. She may be over there. She may be way over there, but she be, she be watching. You say, well, you think you all that? Yeah. Amen. Of course I don't you? Of course. I'm all that to my family. If they lose me, it's going to be some destruction. So, yes. See, y'all got to get off this girlfriend, boyfriend acting. I ain't going to sweat you. What's wrong with you? That's your spouse. That ain't no girlfriend, boyfriend. This is my life. You get the key to my chill. Everything's wrapped up in this. Sweat them. Go on a job. Sometimes you need to go to your spouse's job. Just eat, just eat lunch with them. Where the co-workers is. How y'all doing? Hey, what's happening? What's up? Yeah. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah, what's up? Uh, what, 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 you know him? Come here, partner. Come here, man. You know my wife? See, y'all do too much. Y'all give people too much leeway playing game. I don't play no game. We go to the job site. What's happening? Because your presence is what makes people respect. They see you. you plus, they know you got a little silly in you, too. You, you're kind of clock out. Sometimes y'all too conservative. 
try to be conservative. Somebody try to steal your home. Are you crazy? Man, I'm going to act a, y'all act a fool over other stupid stuff. When you should act a fool. Say, we go, everybody going to get fired on this job. Well, I'm getting, you're going to get fired today. I will get you fired. Because I'm going to act a nut on this job. You take, you, you, you fight for your, say fight. fight. You fight. Man, don't give it up, man. Don't give up your home. You fight hard. Me and my wife, we learned that. We, you know, we just, we have this relationship where it's just like, you know, we, we against everybody. Me and her against the world. Always been like that. Me and her against the world. That's the way it is. That's the way it should be. You ain't got no love till you love like that. There's you and her against the world. You don't want no man that ain't against. I mean, when I say against, I mean that's family. Everybody down the line. And if your family really love y'all, they respect that. They'll know that's, that's, that's right. They, they understand that. But, but if, if your family don't respect y'all, then they ain't, they ain't gonna understand that. You choosing, you choosing a man over your family. Yeah, I'm choosing him over y'all. Where were y'all? I can't hug family at night. <laughs> You know what? All, all of the good feeling of family. I, what can I? I can't work with that. This ain't nothing to work with in the midnight hour. Y'all better stop all that stuff. I mean, we try to get along with your people, but I'm saying don't don't change who you are because of that. They just they just got to understand. Hold on to your love. Lord, let me get on into this. I don't even know how I'm getting because the most the most curses come over relationships. Most people, I remember being in church when I first started walking with the Lord, and uh, maybe that's why I'm saying this. There was, a, there was a girl, I was single for three years, and I was just following the Lord and trying to be saved and, uh, you know, come out of the world, you know, just get, stop selling dope, stop doing it all, just start living holy. And there was a girl at the church that was, she played the piano. And, you know, she was like an old maid type chick. I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't nothing... Well, nothing I was into, you know. I mean, you know, I'm just, you know, she was just, this one of them girls been in church, you know, you know, been in that apostolic and just, you know, just kind of got that residue where they ain't, you can be nice, but she didn't, you know, just had that way, you know, she was just, maybe she was convicted about looks, I don't know, but she just wasn't nothing I was looking at. She was about my age, but she wasn't nothing I was, you know, I was like, I ain't, you know, that. never even, the girl never spoke to me, never said, never even really spoke to me. I never even know, never even, you know, never even called my, never even looked, at no, no conversation. No hugs after church, none of that. No, didn't even know the girl, really. One, one night, this other girl at church called me and said, said, this girl on the piano called me and was hysterical. Screaming on the phone, repenting and apologizing for what she had done. I said, what do you mean what she had done? Done to who? Said, what she had done to you? I said, what she done? I don't know the girl. She ain't done nothing to me. Said, this girl started running down how she was in love with me. Well, not, I don't want to say love, but you know how they want you, they husband. You know that mentality. I believe in God for you. I don't even know the girl ever spoke to me. She done went and done some type of witchcraft stuff. Why she playing the piano? The first one to fall out under the power. Done some type of witchcraft thing to curse me. This is the stuff that happens in church that don't nobody want to deal with. That's why I'm telling you that. And I sat there and couldn't believe it. I mean, my mouth fell open like, what? Then how did, but this is, when they lay hands on her, this girl hits the floor like a potato, pow, like she goes out. She dances and shouts. I said, you mean to tell me she done went into this? But that's what she did. And right there around me and cursing me, I told you, people, there's more witches in church than anywhere else. They're drawn to the church. That's their, more, that's their mission. Their mission is to steal saints. They don't care about them cats in the world. They already lost. They want God's people. 
and Satan sends them to churches. And they get in churches, they get up around leaders, and they start manipulating and, and hiding and getting up in positions. And all of a sudden, you just see chaos. If a pastor don't discern it, that'll be the woman he fall with. And most of these men are kind of taken out because he got people around him who don't know they're supposed to discern these witches too. Your intercessor's supposed to see that. People that pray supposed to see, wait, wait, wait a minute. Why she always about to pass it off? What she, what she want? And y'all, y'all so busy want to be people's friend. Confront them. What, what you want? What you want? Cause you take out my man of God. I mean, what, I mean, you take you gonna you gonna bring shame to me, the church, God, everybody. And a lot of these pastors, man, a lot of them that y'all talking about now started out as good men of God, but they had people around them who wasn't catching, who wasn't catching their back, and wasn't discerning these witches. And, and, and that's why most of y'all know you come out of churches where people, most of the people in positions operated in that witchcraft. Control and, and pushing their will on others and that false prophecy stuff and prophesying and make intimidation and that's what they do. But it'd be the people in high position doing it. And you be trying to figure out why don't they, what, what's wrong because, and then that pastor later on he fall. Or the church goes into scandal because he didn't know somebody was determined to curse him. I had people here years ago. That's why I send Negroes out of here faster than anything. I, I, that's why I search ain't big. I don't care. I don't care, man. But I send you out of here. I'll send you out of here fast. As, I don't care, man. I will send you out of here. I don't have no problem sending you out of here. I don't care about no money. I don't care about you. Can't even buy me. I can go to Australia. I have somebody call me from England. Say you want to build a church in England? We'll support it. So I can go wherever I want to go. Little Louisville ain't keeping me. We gonna build a church in Chicago now. So little Louisville ain't keeping me. But I had I had I had I had a couple here, a couple of couples like that. They had this mentality, just 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 just, just, just cursing me all the time and contrary and working against me all the time and cursing my wife and my sons and all that. And I said, you know what? I put up with that for a long time. Now I just got to, but you know what? What I don't owe them nothing. I don't owe them nothing. Man, get out of here. Get out of here. Don't call me. Don't, no, nah, ain't no whole lot calling me. Ain't no, I don't need no meeting. See, that's, see, that's a real pastor. A real pastor ain't going to have that. Let's have a meeting. Let's talk about what I know you're doing. No, nah, I ain't got time for that. You know what you did. That's why when you correct them, they know that what they did. Get on out of here. I ain't got time to be playing no games with you. There are people who want a pastor, who want somebody to preach the word to them. We ain't going to play no games with folk. And you have to learn to protect not only just protecting your house, but protect your church. Protect. Learn to fight. Not fight people physically, but learn how not to receive the naysayers. Every man of God got naysayers. I mean, what is wrong with us? How are you going to stand there and confront Satan and Satan not send folk to attack you? Why do people shock when, oh, they said that about the past? Why do y'all shock people say things about men of God? That's come with the territory. It ain't like he ain't doing nothing to assault the enemy. They saying it because he's effective. The pastors that are not effective, man, everybody love them. They have no enemies. That's why Jesus said, beware when all men speak well of you because they speak well of the false prophets. Real men of God, man, they ain't nobody, everybody ain't saying good stuff. That's why the number one thing going to happen when a real anointed vessel is speaking, you'll go home or go to some store talking about what that man said, and the first thing come out, somebody, oh, I know who, I know who that is. I remember this. Now, if that pastor wasn't effective and your life wasn't changing, they would never say nothing. They know it's us, it's church. So be careful. Be careful. Learn to, I saw so much stuff going on. With men of God, I said, Lord, come on, some of this is just, just outright crazy. I mean, some stuff we shouldn't even entertain. I mean, we know brothers fall. We know people get off. But I get so upset because if you follow these saints around, you will see their life. And you'll realize these cats don't live right. The main ones on the Internet. I had a girl on the internet attack me, didn't even know me, didn't know me from nobody. I couldn't believe this girl talk. She attacked me like she grew up with me. You know, like she knew me. This went off on me over a $4 message. $4. Just 
$3.99. My video, $3.99. That was too much. But I did some research because I'm, I'm skilled too. So I was, you, you, you got another woman's husband, but yet you're going to attack me. See people, see, people don't know. That's why people run their mouth because people don't know your business. Well, people find out your business and where you creep to. Find out your, 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 your crutches and your, what, you, know, the, you know, how you spelling relief. You ain't fasting and praying to spell relief. They find out your little, uh, uh, um, your, your little friends. Then you shut up because you realize all my business is out there. It's easy to talk when nobody know you. And see, I, that's why I respect men of God because they got to put themselves, they don't get online, uh, Ray Ray at 3000 Yahoo. They don't do that. They got to put their name, their whole name, addresses, and you get to know them, who they are. And the people that sniping and scoping, they don't even read they ain't using their name. Mary about her business brown stuff. That's about her. That's what they writing. You don't even know if that's a real name. But they're going to just destroy you because you got a pastor got to tell us who he is. It's easy to pick men of God apart. And y'all need to realize that if God didn't give you authority there, shut up. I don't care what you think you know. Shut up. Worry about your pastor. Worry about your church. Worry about your life. Because I have seen people get in trouble over and over again, and they don't know one of the major curses is working in most people's life, especially Christians, is they start talking against God's men. I know people use that. Don't, don't, y'all always want to use that scripture, touch not my anointed. That's scripture, though. I don't care because people abused it. It's still scripture. So I learned, even me, myself, I learned, man, shut up, man. I ain't got nothing to say. I know a lot of stuff about a lot of men. I'm, even, even y'all. I don't say nothing. I'm like, man, I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't, 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 ain't going to say nothing, man. They'll get over it. They'll, they'll come up. They'll get out of it. But I don't go broadcasting people's business. You have to stop that. Stop that. Stop doing that. Let me get done. Y'all done made me mad now. Now, that's, 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 that's something I get under my skin because those same people sit in the church for 10 years and receive, and that man go down and mess up and do something, and all of a sudden, they just throw that man away like he never was there for their funerals and weddings and baby dedications and all that. I mean, people are, you know, you know what I just know, you know, really, people are just use us. Most people just use, they'll just use you. Just get what they want and go on and then get an attitude if you ask them to be committed. You have to learn that church is not about... Uh, it's not about uh, 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 um, uh, Baskin Robbins. It's that you get involved. You sign up to take the workload. Amen. All right. I see what kind of, I see how this is going to turn out. And God said to Balaam, blah, 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 blah. Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balaam, get into your land for the Lord refuses to give me leave to go with you. And he told, he told these guys, gone, I ain't going. And the prince of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak and said, Balaam refused to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. He said, I ain't done. I'm going to send some more people. And Balaam came to him, and they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus said the son, then I'm showing you how desperate he is to curse them. Thus said Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me, for I will promote thee. Look, promising. I'm going to promote you unto great honor, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray and thee, and curse this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak will give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of my Lord, of the Lord my God, to do less or more. Now he had it right. Was he right? Amen. Now therefore, I pray thee, stay ye here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me. What the Lord already say? But see, he still thinking about the money. He still thinking about what he's going to give me. People will sell out for a little money. Some, it's, even some of the best people you think are so deep, let money come online. You will find out how, close, how, how spiritual they really are. And the God said unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men shall come if, to call thee, rise up and go with them. Now this is what I really understand. The God said, you know what, I already told you. 
not to do it. But you're going to persist in doing it. Go on, do it. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went to the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for his adversary against him. Now he was riding on the ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and the sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn, in, to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the, of the vineyards, a wall being on the side and a wall on that side. God was bringing him straight on down the pipe. Come straight on to me because I'm going to cut your head off because I told you, don't curse these people. Amen. Ain't that good? Angels are working for you. Amen. Thank God angels are working for me. Amen. Even when they determine. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. And he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place. Was, was, no, was no way to turn either to the right hand or the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down on the Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he, he smote the ass with a stab, and the Lord opened the mouth of the ass. Now, ain't this something? Ain't this something? You talking about, you talking about, you talking about determination. You know when you're doing something and it don't work, it's not working, and you just say to yourself, this, I know, I, I know God is telling me don't do this. Every time I have gone beyond that, it's been bad for me. I, God can speak in so many ways. There'll be something I want to do, and all of a sudden, it won't work. Something will happen where the car won't. So something will happen. And that's the indication, don't do this. But if you keep persisting, it'll happen. you can go on and do it. But it won't work out. Every time God's told me before, you don't do this. And I did it anyway. You pay for it. See, many of your trouble, most of your trouble is you don't know how to yield. The God, it, it, this man was so determined to get this money. He was so driven by selfish ambition that God had to open up the mouth of an animal and say, talk to him for me. Yeah. Now, now, now I'm going to show you how, how determined, say determined. determined. Look, the Lord opened the mouth and and she said unto Balaam, what have I done to thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, he didn't even realize he's talking to an animal. He's so mad, he's talking to an animal. That's how determined he is. That he done lost all reason. The animal's talking. He should have said, the animal is talking to me. That's how bad some of us are when it comes to hearing from the Lord. We got to, he got to do something real crazy to get our attention. And we wonder why we always going through crazy stuff, because that's the only thing that gets your attention. When everything's good, you won't listen to God. But he'll mess with your money. Oh, God can get your attention quick. He touched your money. Boy, that money gets short, that bill get high. All of a sudden, that lg &E come through and it's, whoa. And you ain't got the money. All of a sudden, your check's short. Then all of a sudden, the Lord, Lord, you got help. I mean, now you ready to listen. You all prideful, all of a sudden, your marriage get rocky. To the point that you feel that you scared now, like we talking to voice. Lord, why I got to go? Why, why, see, why do you need that level of fear and threatening? Then just to do what God wants you to do. Because we all headed and we're going to have to be pushed into doing stuff. I've seen stuff happen. I don't, you don't listen to God. Something go on with your child. He be speaking. He speaks through circumstances. When you don't hear him, he will speak through a circumstance. He will speak to you. That's, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's really, that's the beauty of our God, that he won't just leave you alone. He'll keep speaking through circumstances. Let me get done, y'all. I'm getting done. I'm getting done. I know it's late. Let me get done. And it says, uh, and the ass said to Balaam, am I not thy ass? Upon which thou has written ever since I was, I was, I'm tripping. This is a donkey talking. I can't. This is just, unto this day, was I ever want to do so unto thee? And he said, No, nah, man. <laughs> Babe said, No, nah, man. You ain't. You ain't never did this. <laughs> and the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. Now, even after this. God still had to show him this angel standing here with a sword. And the sword was drawn in his hand. He bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord 
said unto him, Wherefore thou, thou smitten then thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me. The animal saw me. Did y'all hear the animal saw me? There are people that are, you know, be running with cats, they be like animals. You know, some cats are just wrong. This ain't, this ain't saved, this heathens. But they'll know God before you do sometimes. You ever been with somebody that ain't even saved? And they'll, they'll, all of a sudden they'll get spiritual on you. <laughs> they'll get spiritual like, wait, whoa. I don't think you should be here smoking this. That's it. <laughs> you ain't like, like, like you, like you say who you are. People that ain't even saved are just, uh, no, the, the answer starts speaking to you. People that know you, people that know, people don't know God, but all of a sudden, God has to open, God has to speak through them and say something to you that make you only listening because you know, damn, this is not their character for them to say this. Man, I, man, I, 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 done, been, I done been in the clubs before years ago. I done been drunk, man, all out of my mind. And somebody, we all drunk. And somebody would say something to me like, dude, this ain't. You don't seem like you're supposed to be in here. Out the blue. Wow, then, you, then I get mad at him. <laughs> man, you don't know me. <laughs> you know, you got to get mad because it's the truth. <laughs> but he had to speak through a heathen because I wasn't going to listen. Amen. So down he'll speak through accident. He'll speak through stuff like that. Oh, you ain't going to listen to me. He'll speak through, he'll speak through health. Oh, you ain't listening to me. Get that heart tightened up on you. Also, oh, oh, Lord. <laughs> you know, you feel that pain go through your heart. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know, you feel that pain. You be like, you be ready to run out of the house. Like, for some reason, why don't we run out of the house? People get scared all of a sudden. They be running, they run out of the house. Oh, my goodness. The first time when you feel that pain too through your heart, you start thinking, what, what have I done? Oh, Lord, Lord, I repent, Lord, for what I did. Because <laughs> you're like, oh, I might die right now. Let me, Lord, I repent for what I did, whatever I did wrong, Lord. Oh, make it stop. God will speak to you, man. We, be, we, we are taught God is just all blessing. Man, God will do what he got to do to speak to you. Before you wreck, before you get your head cut off. He love you that much. Let me get done. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displeased thee, I will get thee back again. The angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee. Now, I'm going to paraphrase the rest of this. Of course, he went back with the men, and they set Balaam up to speak over the children of Israel. And Balaam kept blessing him. He, want, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't curse him. He kept blessing him. And Balaam got mad. But then Balaam came up with an idea. And this is the coat. I'm like, what did this, what kind of guy is this? The donkey told you. The Lord over your soldier angel would cut your head off. And you, now you're going to still come up with another way. He was determined. This is how determined Satan is to curse you. He said, you know what? Have them go have sex with these Midian women, and they'll be cursed. And that's how we get destroyed. If he was, to, he, he will. Satan will always use his number one weapon against men. Your natural sex drive, he'll use it against you. He knows that anything outside of marital sex brings a curse. He knows it. He knows it. And that's the reason why he gets us into that even early. You get into pornography, masturbation, any type of sexual deviation from marriage. He knows it's even in marriage you can do things that are not lawful. I said it. You can't porno in your bed. You can't be doing that stuff and think it's God before the Lord. Y'all heard what I said. Some stuff you just can't do. You renew your mind. Your mind is messed up. You've been watching uh, uh, them chicks on that screen, and, you, and that's what satisfies you, and you don't understand that that's not how you treat a woman of God. Amen. Renew your mind. Amen. Or you can curse your bed. Amen. The bed is under foul, but you can curse it. Amen. If you start doing what dogs do. 
You'll figure that out later. <laughs> dogs are homosexuals. The Bible calls dogs homosexuals. They can't have sex. If they got to do strange things. You don't treat your wife like that. You got to be honest. You have a spirit of lust. And honey, you have a spirit of lust too as a woman. And you get delivered from that. And y'all think about sex. Come together when y'all can do it correctly. Talk to one another. Quit lusting each other. Because it opens the door for curses. Sexual curses. Uh, y'all don't want to talk. So nobody want to talk about this. So no man want to talk. See, no, we don't want to. No, no, no. No, we don't want to talk about that. Let's, you know, talk about the kids. Now, y'all. <laughs> Sexual sin is the direct open line for demonic possession. That's why Satan starts getting you early with sexual sin because he knows that's a direct line to get demon possessed. And once that spirit of lust gets in your life, it will drive you for the rest of your life. It will drive you. You will just be running after lust for the rest of your life. It will destroy everything you touch. Lust will kill it. Lust will kill your marriage. It will kill your job. It will kill your money. It will kill your health. Your health will go too. It can never be satisfied. And that's why you got to stop looking for people to fulfill your lust and start saying, Lord, deliver me. Get this lust out of me. So I can look at a, at a healthy human being in a marital relationship and love them. Not lust them. Not look for them to give me a feeling or a desire for feeling, put out some fire. But if I do come together with them in intimacy, it is for us to fulfill one another's love, not to get off. The church ain't talking about that. And that's why we got so many people in pornography. That's why we got so many spirit spouses. Y'all heard what I said. These demons are uh, having sex with y'all while y'all sleeping. See, no matter what talk about that. Because the door of sexual sin is open. You got to close those doors by stop indulging in that stuff. Come out of it. See, when the Bible says renew your mind, it means the way you used to think, renew all the way you used to think. So for some reason, we'll renew, we'll renew our mind when it comes to drugs, cussing. You know, we won't go out, we won't smoke, we won't drink. But when it comes to sex, we don't renew our mind in that area. We'll do the same stuff in our bedroom we was doing before we were saved. And we ain't never went to God and said, God, show me what's right. Show me what's wrong. Show me what I need to be doing. Show me what's good. Show me what's bad. Because we're because we, because we going to protect our pleasure. Me and our love is a pleasure. We will protect our pleasure. So we ain't going to do nothing but hurt our pleasure. But you know your conscience is pricked. When you go against your conscience, you're sinning. Conscious prick. You need to learn how to say, you know what, honey, we're gonna we gonna learn how to how to how to be together. We're gonna talk. Let's talk. Yeah. Notice that that's one of the that's one of the things that people never do before sex, even when you was a young playing around, chasing and get it. You ain't never been talked to. You've been talked out of. <laughs> that's different. But I'm not ever discussed and talked to you. Y'all never talk, y'all ain't never talked to nobody. You just think it's automatic, just well, you know. No, you talk. Talk to them. Tell them, you know, no, I ain't with that and that, you know, and I'm, you know. And when you have, when, and when you know as a man you have problems in that area, you got to talk to your wife about that. Tell her, like, you know, I'm struggling here and there's certain things I want to stay away from and certain things I want to do so I don't get tempted in that. You talk. I'm, I'm giving you stuff that you ain't going to hear nobody tell y'all. Because we was told everything is all good. The Bible says marriage is honorable, the bed is undefiled, but you can do things to defile your bed. And so sexual sin is the quickest way. And a lot of these pastors are falling, but when at the, at the event of the internet is when most pastors start falling. Because they got into this internet and all of a sudden they didn't have proper barriers and boundaries. And then what, what they never got delivered from, they just never had it in close proximity. Talk to me. They ain't delivered from pornography. They just didn't have it around them. But the computer gives it to everybody. So it's right there. So now this pastor who was once powerful in the world, he's he clicking. It's going deeper. And the devil said, caught you looking. Caught you looking. Now let me send what you need. And now you go on there, you see church scandal, church scandal, church scandal, church scandal, church scandal. It came from pornography. It came from sexual sin. And that's how the devil going to take your marriage away. And that's how he's going to take your mind away. Because sexual sin also destroys the mind. They have found out scientifically that a man's, a man's 
blood goes into a woman's bones. Every man you've ever been with, his part of him is in you. That's why y'all become so schizophrenic. It's too many, you got too much in you. Too many different, too many different men, too many different ideas and attitudes. You was only supposed to be with one man. And when you get saved, it's time to detox. Detox. That means come out of it, be single, celibate, saved. Walk it out till you get lust out of you. Walk it out. That's why a lot of people ain't married. It ain't because God ain't no men. It's you, you, you got something in you. Get that lust out of you. You brothers, man, you can't just get, get married to cause you just because you could just to fulfill your lust. You just gonna if you can marry a woman and you lust for you, it's gonna lust another woman when you marry. Lust don't stop because you marry you you marry brothers out of said amen. It don't stop because you got married. Matter of fact, it can intensify. Because now you locked into the fact I only got one hamburger for the rest of my life. And you could take the pickles off the Whopper, and you could take the cheese off, but in the end, it's still a Whopper. Still child boy flavor. And after you ate that child bro for a while, and you start looking over at the rallies of Big Buford. <laughs> And the big Buford look good. Even White Castles look good. <laughs> Little small White Castles. <laughs> so you got to be careful. That's where your lust come from when it's a final. It's just finite. You mean this is it? Yeah, that's it. And if you can't accept that, man, you ain't falling in love yet. When you love a person, it's like whether what have happened to you. If you balloon up to 300, 400 pounds, don't. <laughs> I would hate for you to tempt me. <laughs> I may be tempted to go if you get that big. But if you do, I'll be here. You gotta, <laughs> they get that big, you got to learn how to work. <laughs> you got to put work in, amen? Amen. Amen. Let me get, I'm done. I'm done. I got to close right here. Amen. <laughs> but say determined. Say he's determined to curse you. Every which way you can think of, he's determined to curse you. And what I want to say, I want to finish that with that sexual sin because that's what happened to God's people and they were cursed from that day forward. They, got, they went into the curse of sexual sin. And many of us are struggling in that area. And we're struggling, but the number, number one reason you struggle is because Satan knows that's, that his power lies in secrecy. Amen. His power is in secrecy. Amen. He knows that the Bible says a man that cover his sin shall not prosper. In other words, he'll be stuck yeah. till, he, till, he, till he confess his sin. That's why when you're in, when you're in sex, sexual sin, it's just like drug addiction. As long as a person keeps it to themselves and thinks they can fight it themselves, they'll stay in addiction. One of the main ways, one of the number one ways of being free is to bring in somebody else, to bring somebody else in who is free and begin to have a confidant, somebody you can confide in, somebody you can tell this to because you can't get free by yourself. You need people. God created us to be like that. We need people to help us get free. So one of the things you have to do is find somebody you can be honest with. That's why I, don't, I, don't, I always tell people, of course you got to repent to God or whatever, but, I, but one, one thing I want you to do is understand, tell on the devil. He living in your secrecy. Tell on the devil. Getting free is just telling on Satan and saying, this is where I am. Amen? Amen. Stand on your feet. That's one of the things that, that, that God showed me when I was a baby Christian that I couldn't do it by myself. But I wanted people to think I had it all together and I, I wasn't going through nothing. And, you know, I had to learn how to be honest about where I was. Your honesty is what God is after. He can fix you if you're honest. But your dishonesty, he can't fix you. I remember there was a brother, he was, he was caught red-handed in adultery. He was, he was an elder at the church. And he got caught in adultery. And uh, that brother wouldn't say nothing. He wouldn't say nothing. Everybody knew. He wouldn't say nothing, and uh, he, couldn't let, he, couldn't, he couldn't break it with the woman. He couldn't let her go. 
because he, he kept it secret, he kept it to himself. The minute he stood up on that day and confessed it, he confessed it to the church, it broke. It, you, you felt it like, it was almost like you heard something in the spirit crack, like pow, it broke. And his, if you could see it in his wife, it broke, the yoke broke over both of them. And they got restored right there. Just for, but every, before the end, we were praying for him, trying to get him out. He couldn't, we couldn't get him out. He had to acknowledge. The Bible says we, if we acknowledge our sin, we recover our soul out of the snare of the, of the devil, snare of the enemy. Now, I'm not telling you to get up in front of no church and tell nobody nothing. But if you marry, tell your spouse. You hide it. You may think they may be upset. They are going to be. It's part of it. But that secret is driving a wedge between you. Satan is working on that, on that secret. Just be honest. Tell them what's going on in your life. If you can't tell your spouse what, man, what relationship, whatever, what, who, whoever will be close enough to you for you to tell them the truth. The person that's actually laying down with you, they the ones need to know. That's where your true accountability comes from. A husband and a wife keep each other accountable. If you don't have a, a marriage, a spouse, then find you some a good Say, friend, and tell them the truth about this is where I am. Make sure they save and make sure they don't gossip. <laughs> Do it at your own risk. But there's, there's good people out here you can talk to. Don't use it as an excuse not to talk to folk because you can't get out of it on your own. And you ain't got to go into detail and talk. You ain't got to go into all the know who. We know. We don't need to know all that. But just get to before somebody, and when you hear yourself confessing it, See, open confession is good. You hear yourself confessing it and begin to walk in the light. And the light means now somebody knows where I am. And I give them the permission to call me, check on me, deal with me, rebuke me, whatever I need. I give them the permission to do that. Now that brings somebody else in and Satan realize they ain't fighting by themselves no more. I can't get them alone no more. They ain't fighting by themselves. Somebody else is in, involved in this now. That's how you walk in freedom. Yes, God can instantly set us free, but most of us going to walk it out day by day, step by step. Amen? Amen. Come on, son. Don't assume your young people are free. Don't assume because they're young they're free. Most of them are not free. If they got devices and uh, cell phones and iPads and computers, trust me, even in, even in PlayStations and all that, Xboxes, get online. Understand that Satan is destroying us by sexual sin. And it's so secretive in the church, we won't talk about it, and that's why we're getting wrecked. I want your marriage to last. I want your family to last. And those of you all who are waiting on a spouse, the, the, God can accelerate that. When you get serious about saying, Lord, I'm going to be committed to being pure, holy in my life, holy in my thought life, holy in my, in my walk. And I know it's not easy. I was single for three years. It is a, that, is, that is a fight. That's one of the strongest fights I ever fought in my life. I ain't going to lie. It is a strong fight because you're talking about a natural feeling of your body. You naturally, especially men, you naturally create seed. It's a natural thing. And to have to deny yourself, but it's possible. It's hard, but it's possible. Don't give yourself an excuse. And when you, if you fall, get up and keep going. Don't you sit there in your sin. Get up. God wants us free. Say free. free. Come on, say free. free. Now, 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 I didn't leave you out of here shouting and dancing and hucklebucking and nothing like that, but this message is, is deeper than anything I've even said. Yeah. This is deep. Come on, play, son. Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for causing us to come to repentance, showing us ourselves. We repent for relig being religious, wanting to look good on the outside and having issues on the inside. Father, you know. Ain't no need us lying to you. You know. You know us. You know what we do. You know how we feel. You know what we think. You know what we say. You know how we live when ain't nobody watching. Father, we don't want to feel that feeling of shame. Cleanse us and set us free. I want my prayer team to come quick for prayer, prayer people. Amen. If you need somebody to pray with you this morning, I want you to come. Come. We have a prayer team that will, that will pray for you. On messages like this, people get a little fearful. Don't be fearful. Come. That's what, that's what the church is. If 
you need prayer in the area, if you're struggling, if you're battling, if you, if you need courage, if you need strength, if you need to be strengthened, come. If you want to stand in the gap for somebody that you know that's going through something, you, you, you can come. Receive prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We know, we know, we know, we know, we know, Lord God. Satan has done a lot to bring struggle in our life. Father, we want to be free. Set us free in our mind, in our heart, in our bodies. Lord, set our children free. We don't want them to have to go through this evilness that's in the world. Father, set marriages free. I know people can't come. I know, I know marriage is very difficult because some of us don't want our spouses to even know, but God sees your heart. Pray where you are. It's not about embarrassing or shaming nobody. It's not about seeing nobody's business. Pray where you are. Father, set us free. Set us free. Break every sin and stain off of our life. Set us free by your power, by your glory. minister to us Holy Ghost hallelujah 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 thank you Lord God thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus we want to be free hallelujah it takes some steps to be free. That means you might have to get rid of the, the internet or do something that, that you might have to do something to get free. Become accountable. Talk to your spouse. Talk to somebody. Talk to a good friend. Let them know where you are. Hallelujah. I want to be free. And stay free. I want, you to, I want you to let the Lord use you this morning. Grab somebody's hand. Grab some, grab, turn, neck, turn, turn to somebody. Find a partner. Find somebody. Find somebody. Grab somebody. Grab somebody. And let the Lord use you to pray for them. Come on. Pray. Talk to the Lord for them. You don't have to know everything in their life, but pray for them. Come on. Open your mouth. You, God can't answer prayers. You're not praying. Pray over, pray over them. Pray over their struggles. Pray over their fears. Pray over what they're dealing with. Pray. Lord, we touch and we agree. We agree, Lord. Hallelujah. We touch and we agree for breakthrough. We agree for healing, deliverance. We agree for prosperity. We agree for peace. Peace. We agree. Everything Satan is doing in our life, we break it in the name of Jesus Christ. We break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Hallelujah. 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 We pray. Hallelujah. 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 Bring restoration. Bring reconciliation. We pray. Bring clarity. Release faith. Release faith that remove mountains. Hallelujah. We pray over these youth, these children. We pray for purity, holiness. Watch over them with your angels. Watch over them with your angels. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah.